Good morning. Okay, so we start from where we were yesterday, and uh, we have seen that uh, Majorana mass term for the uh, neutrinos has this form. Now, I write the term for just one neutrinos, neutrino, but we have seen that we, if we have three neutrinos, uh, in general, we can extend uh, our procedure, build uh, uh, a Lagrangian where the um, Yukawa couplings are non-diagonal, then diagonalize the mass matrix, and uh, uh, end up with um, three neutrino mass eigenstates and three flavor eigenstates. Can you hear me? And more than this is not possible. Okay, I will talk loudly. And uh, three flavor eigenstates that are uh, that can be obtained by mass against states through the U matrix, PMNS matrix. And uh, um, we were seeing what happened if neutrino is a Majorana particle. So that since it, it is a ferma, fer, uh, neutral fermion, it can be equal to uh, the complex conjugate. And uh, the complex conjugate is C psi bar transpose. Mm. Uh, in general, we will use psi left. Uh, and uh, this C is I gamma 2 gamma 0. So a few properties uh, of the um, C matrix is that the uh, adjoint is equal to the inverse and is equal to minus itself and uh, this is also the transpose and uh, um, what more C gamma mu C uh, gamma mu transpose C dagger is equal to minus gamma mu. Uh, okay. Now, if we take, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, build psi as psi left plus C psi left bar transpose, this is a Majorana fermion, because when you take the complex conjugate, the first term goes into the second and vice versa. Uh, now, um, the last thing we have seen is that uh, if you take psi L and take the complex conjugate, this is right-handed. while psi r complex conjugate, this is left handed. So if you look at this structure here, we can imagine to build something that is new L and instead of new right, we take new L complex conjugate bar. Okay, and here, new L bar, and instead of new R, new L C, complex conjugate. And we can consider this as a, uh, okay, just a coefficient, for instance, minus lambda. Now, from the point of view of the structure, structure right-left, this has the same transformation properties of the Dirac mass, metric, uh, mass uh, term. But 
There is, however, one problem, more than one actually. For instance, if you consider the hypercharge, and we saw that uh, the hypercharge, uh, remember, hypercharge is Q minus I3, and the neutrino, the new L, as I3 equal, equal to one half. So the hypercharge of new L is minus one half. When you take the complex conjugate, this is, it, it begins plus one half. Then the bar is another complex conjugate, so again uh, minus one half. So this is not uh, hypercharge equal to zero, but equal to minus one. So hypercharge is violated. From the point of view of the, uh, since the charge of neutrino is zero, hypercharge is equal to minus I3. So also the third component of this object here, it is, is uh, one. So it is a member of a triplet of SU2, not a singlet of SU2. So this form for the mass matrix, for the mass term, for a Majorana neutrino, does not respect the gauge symmetry. Uh, okay. Um, but we will see how to obtain this term for, from something that respects the gauge symmetry. But in principle, this is the Majorana mass term for a neutrino. If we want to write the Lagrangian, we have to add the uh, kinetic term, let's say for Majorana. So uh, we should have uh, uh, new bar L, this slash new L plus I uh, new L, new L C bar this slash this slash new LC uh, minus, let's say, lambda. Okay, I put parenthesis because here we have one half and uh, uh, the same thing. New L bar C, new L plus new L bar, new LC. The minus one half, the, the plus one half or, or minus here, uh, is there because if you want to write the equation of motion, so dL, for instance, for new L minus d mu, uh, yes, dL with respect to d mu new L equal to zero. Um, if you do properly the calculations, you need this one half to reproduce the um, equation for new L with respect to the Dirac case. And, uh, and there is another way to write uh, the Lagrangian or the master. Uh, if you uh, use, but I, th this will be on the note, if you realize that new LC bar is also minus new L transpose C dagger. So you can write the Lagrangian with this substitution, okay, and obtain uh, the Lagrangian in terms of new L only, okay. But when you want to calculate the equation of motions, uh, you need to take care to the fact that uh, uh, fermion fields anti-commute. So, now, uh, the equation on motion will be the corresponding, will correspond to the Weyl equation. The Weyl equation, we didn't write that uh, last time, are, for instance, M psi r, and analogously for the uh, psi uh, r. So, in the case of massive neutrino, they couple the left and right part. And here, from this Lagrangian, instead of uh, psi r, you will get simply the uh, 
C, Psi, uh, new left, bar, transpose. Okay. Now, the general case, in the general case, this is always for just one generation, we uh, can consider a master, let's say Dirac plus Majorana, uh, with both Dirac and Majorana terms. So let's say MD for Dirac, uh, new bar L, new R plus new bar R, new L. Then uh, uh, let's say M uh, L. Um, one master, remember if I call it ML, uh, yes, with one half. Uh, where is new L C bar new L uh, plus the complex conjugate new L C plus. And we also add the, uh, mm, okay, the uh, corresponding term for the right part. So new R C bar new R plus new R bar new R C. And we can write this in a more compact way. I write the result, then I define the vector M N plus Hermitian conjugate, where N, uh, sorry, this is complex conjugate, N is new L, new R C and M is equal to M L M D M D M R. So what are these formulas? We consider the most general mass Lagrangian, mass term in the Lagrangian for a Dirac neutrino. So we have the right handed part together with new L. We add a Majorana uh, mass term for new L, a Majorana MR term for new R. And by introducing this doublet that is left, because new R complex conjugate is left. Remember, left means that only the lower components are different from zero. With this uh, symmetric matrix, M, you can write, okay, there is some uh, um, trick that you have to use, but it, you can prove that uh, this is true. Uh, now, this matrix is not diagonal, okay? But we can do the same thing that we have done when we had three generation of uh, neutrinos. This complex symmetric matrix can be diagonalized by a unitary matrix. So you can find a unitary matrix so that the transpose MU is uh, diagonal. And uh, the U matrix is so that uh, uh, these are the eigenstates in which the mass, masses are diagonal, and uh, they are related to N through the unitary matrix, so that you can prove that L D plus M mass 
equal to minus one half and c bar m n plus Hermitian conjugate is now equal to, uh, so let's call this n, small n, it is equal to minus one half n c bar m diagonal n plus Hermitian conjugate. And this is minus one half sum e from one to two m i new i new uh, new i bar new i where new i is new i uh, left plus new i left complex conjugate okay so we start from this Lagrangian we write it in compact notation just compact notation and we found that the mass matrix so we have two neutrino states new L and another left uh, handed state new R's uh, complex conjugate we have a non-diagonal matrix since it is complex but symmetric it can be diagonalized here you don't have u to the minus one but you transpose but this is exact and u connects the mass eigenstates to the initial uh, eigenstate new l uh, initial fields and this u is exactly the matrix you need to write the lagrangian in a diagonal form in the in this uh, last step um, you use the fact that if you consider new i l new bar i l new l this is zero new bar i l complex conjugate new i l complex conjugate is zero so only the uh, let's say these combinations remain and we discover that if we start from a generic Dirac plus Majorana mass term, we end up with a Majorana, two Majorana neutrinos, new one, let's say, and new two. Okay, so this is the important uh, lesson that we learn from this. Uh, uh, hypothesis of having the most general Lagrangian. Now, obviously, things change a bit if you introduce three generations, okay? But this is, it is more a matter of notation than other. So this mass matrix will have the same form, but each one of these will be a matrix itself, okay? I don't write the formulas. And uh, moreover, you can generalize this procedure to the case of three active neutrinos, because we know that there are three active neutrinos at least, plus uh, a number, let's say ns, of uh, uh, right-handed neutrinos. So here you can have not, not just three, but more sterile neutrinos. In this case, this is not uh, a square matrix anymore, uh, but uh, formulas are very similar, okay? And you will find it in the note or on standard books, okay? So this is, but I repeat, the most important thing is that when you start from a Dirac plus master, you end up with a Majorana neutrino. Now, uh, uh, as we have said, the term, uh, this term here, is not something that we put in the Lagrangian so easily because it violates 
violates the gauge symmetry of the theory. Now, if we believe that uh, uh, the extension of the standard model will be some uh, theory whose symmetry group is more general than the standard model symmetry group, um, we want to preserve gauge symmetry. And if we have to sacrifice to something, maybe uh, the, there are other things that we want to sacrifice more than the gauge symmetry. Moreover, if you look at this term here, uh, the lepton number also is violated. Because uh, when you take complex conjugate and then bar, you get the same lepton number. So this violates by two units lepton number. But lepton number is not the, is only an accidental symmetry of the standard model. So maybe it's violated. There are experiments, for instance, looking for mu to e gamma or neutrino less double beta decay, as we will see. Another thing that maybe we can uh, sacrifice is the um, renormalizability of the theory. Because uh, maybe uh, an effective operator that has more than dimension four in mass is something coming from some unknown theory and at low energy, relatively low energy at the weak uh, scale, it manifests itself, this theory, this theory as a, a non-renormalizable -renormaliza operator. And uh, we see now how, okay. So, and uh, we will discuss a simple mechanism to uh, generate uh, neutrino masses. Uh, typically, you find uh, something like this. You can consider the Weinberg operator, dimension five. I write it, then we will discuss it, like L bar phi tilde phi tilde transpose L C plus Hermitian conjugate. But where this uh, come from comes from? Okay, we have said that uh, to put by hand this term in the Lagrangian is a bit maybe too much, but we want to preserve at least the gauge symmetry. Remember that to get uh, this uh, neutrino masses, uh, we were uh, considering the phi tilde. Phi tilde is uh, um, I sigma to uh, phi star. And uh, uh, when we consider, for instance, L bar phi tilde nu r, this was the Yukawa term. After uh, the symmetry breaking, this goes into nu bar L nu r times uh, the vacuum expectation value of the dx field. So a term like this will generate the neutrino mass and uh, uh, respects the uh, gauge symmetry since uh, it has zero hypercharge and is a singlet of SU2. Uh, and uh, you see we have here this term. So this is good, but we don't have new R. We want something that will give us the Majorana mass term. So we need something that behaves like the, uh, that is right-handed, like, like the new R. So LC, that is new LC, 
uh, and uh, for the electron, but phi tilde will pick up the upper component of the doublet. So this you can check as hypercharge equal to zero, is a, an SU2 singlet, and is right-handed. So this, if you consider the vacuum expectation value of phi tilde, v square root of 2, 1, 0, hmm, gives exactly this Lagrangian term. Okay, and this is called the Weinberg operator. But if you count the mass, the dimension as mass, you have three half for the spinor here, and three half, so three, and twice the scalar field that has dimension one. So it is dimension five. And so you have a, a dimensional coefficient here divided um, some large mass. Okay, uh, this has dimension of mass and can be related to the scale of new physics. For instance, it can be gut scale or uh, whatever. So this is not a renormalizable term because it's dimension five, but uh, respects the gauge symmetry. But not lepton number conservation. Okay. Now, um, it is also interesting to see that, let me cancel here, maybe this one. If, uh, if we start again with this uh, Lagrangian, Let's say D plus M. So uh, I canceled the mass matrix, but I can write it here. M was MD, MR, and M, uh, sorry, ML, MD, MD, and R. So imagine we start with ML equal to zero because we don't want directly this uh, term, because it violates the gauge symmetry. So in this case, uh, we have minus a coefficient, uh, nu bar r, psi tilde dagger. Notice that here, you don't have dagger, but transpose. Hmm? This is for hypercharged conservation. But here, imagine you have this plus L bar phi tilde nu r minus one half m r nu r bar nu r c plus nu r c bar nu r. So, uh, this, since nu r is a singlet, is a sterile neutrino for standard model, this term does not give any problem. It's not like this. So we can add. And maybe this mass can be also very large. There's no reason why this should be small. This term... Uh, with the uh, Higgs mechanism, uh, gives the Dirac mass uh, term. Now, if you diagonalize this uh, this uh, this mass matrix, just with ML equal to zero, but actually the calculation is just a bit more involved, but you can do also for MD, ML different from zero. You get the two mass eigenstates, let's call it M12, that are MR 
plus or minus square root of mr uh, squared plus 4 md squared divided by 2. This is just for from uh, uh, determinant of m minus lambda i equal to 0. So the circular equation for the diagonalization of this matrix. Now, if uh, mr is very high, so in the hypothesis that uh, mr is very high, you can write this as mr 1 plus 4 md squared divided mr squared divided by 2, you get 2, uh, okay, first let's expand the square root, uh, so 1 plus md squared divided 2 m r squared uh, okay divided by 2 so um, in the first case you have m r and uh, sorry, there is uh, uh, no, okay, right. In the other case, md squared divided 2 mr. You know, the 2 uh, will simplify. We have 4 here, and so the 2 disappears. So you get 2. One mass against states is the MR here, that we can imagine is very large, while the other tends to be very small, because you have MD that you can get, take the usual neutrino mass, order of 0.1 uh, electron volt, and MR that is very high. And if we Take, for instance, uh, let's say, if you take, sorry, MD is not the, uh, so the mass against state the second one should be of the order of 0.1 electron volt. You can take MD or the order, for instance, of the electroweak scale, MR, the order of, uh, for instance, the GATT scale, GEV, and uh, you get that uh, MD squared over MR is of the order of 0.1 electron volt, if you do the calculation. So, in this case, through a very high mass, you get a small mass for one of the two mass eigenstates. And this is called the CISO mechanism. Uh, it would be the CISO mechanism of type 1. Depending on the on how the Lagrangian is built, you can have also uh, CISO type 2 and 3. But we wanted only to get the main message that starting from a Lagrangian containing a Majorana mass term for the right-handed neutrino that does not violate any gauge symmetry, and a Dirac mass term when we diagonalize this mass matrix with the left mass equal to zero, but it can be also very small, you get two masses 
If, you, if ML is different from zero, the formulas are much a bit more complicated, but the result is always the same. You get one very massive eigenstate and, one, and another with a small mass. Um, okay. There is another thing that you could do. If you start from that Lagrangian up there and you um, evaluate the Lagrange equation for new R, and you suppose that since new R is very massive, the kinetic term can be neglected. From this part only, you get a constraint. And if you substitute back this constraint in the Lagrange, you get exactly the, uh, let's say, Majorana mass term that we have found in the beginning. And also this, you can find on the notes, is just, a, let's say, an exercise. But to conclude this part on the masses, uh, we can summarize things. So in the Lagrangian, we can have two kinds of masses, Dirac, and this is just the, the straightforward extension of the standard model. But also we can introduce uh, Majorana masses. Now, for Majorana masses, in general, we can have one uh, mass term for the left-handed part of neutrino and one for right-handed. If we have all the three terms at the same time, we can uh, uh, diagonalize the mass matrix, and we found, we have done this for just one generation, we have seen this, and you find two Neutri Majorana neutrinos. So from the most general mass term, you get two Majorana neutrinos. Uh, then we have seen that since uh, one of the mass terms, this one, uh, is uh, not respecting the gauge symmetry, actually, this can be obtained by uh, an operator dimension five, I cancel, uh, the Weinberg operator, and that instead respects the symmetry, the gauge symmetry, but is uh, dimension five. So not uh, uh, renormalizable, but suppressed by, suppressed by some large scale. Um, and starting from a Lagrangian that contains, let's say, Dirac masses plus a Majorana mass for the right-handed state that we suppose very massive, we, uh, by diagonalizing the mass matrix, we find two mass eigenstates. One very large of the order of MR, and the other that can be of the order of what experimentally, experimentally we have found for neutrino masses. So less than uh, one electron volt. Okay, uh, Elio, maybe it's time to. Okay, we can stop here and then we start again. Okay. Okay. So just uh, before starting with another topic, um, it was my mistake to say complex conjugate. When you have a spin or psi. This is the conjugate, and this is complex conjugate. So when I said complex conjugates, new LC, that is conjugate, okay? This is uh, C, psi bar, transpose, that is I, gamma two, psi star. There is a complex conjugate, but this is the conjugate of the spin, okay? So sorry for the Confusion. Uh, okay, now uh, we discuss, but this is just an overview because this would be the topic of uh, all the another cycle of lectures: the neutrino interactions. So uh, I write the charge current term G uh, minus G. 2 square root of 2, 
this is j mu l w c uh, w mu plus j okay the complex conjugate the hermitian conjugate this g is the um, the um, uh, when you uh, define a gauge theory you s uh, substitute the derivative with the uh, covariant derivative okay and uh, there is an additional term one for each symmetry group and we associate a constant to every group so this is the g of the and uh, the uh, neutral current g small g to cos theta weinberg j mu l and c z mu where the uh, the um, charged current is two nu bar l gamma mu l mu that is two sum for alpha equal to e mu tau nu alpha l bar gamma mu uh, l alpha l l is the field for the charged leptons and the neutral current part is nu bar l gamma mu nu l okay and uh, so the sum for alpha equal to e mu tau nu alpha left bar gamma mu nu alpha l okay this is just to see what we are talking about so from the covariant derivative in the Lagrangian we get the interaction terms the charge current coupled to the W and the neutral current coupled to the Z okay this is the Weinberg theta angle that uh, comes from the the Higgs mechanism when SU2 left times U1 hypercharge is broken down to U1 electromagnetic okay but uh, it's just a parameter that uh, uh, we get from experiments now when uh, for the moment we disregard the the mixing of neutrinos so when neutrinos sorry Uh, cos cos okay uh, cosine so when neutrinos propagate through matters they will interact typically with electron nucleons so neutron and protons and uh, nuclei So we want to see what are the typical cross-sections of, uh, uh, for instance, uh, nu uh, alpha electron going into nu alpha electrons, in general also antineutrinos, mm? and uh, uh, then with nucleons uh, new alpha plus n going into something or with nuclei let's say actually we will do some example and uh, make some plots 
if uh, <laughs> I can. Okay. Um, just to maybe I should have cancelled that one. Okay. Just to uh, see how, for instance, you describe the process uh, new uh, e e minus going to new e e minus. So consider, for instance, the electron neutrino type. We can have scattering of uh, new mu, new tau, and new e on electrons. But let's start from the neutrinos, uh, to, from the electron neutrinos. If you um, consider energies lower than the uh, W and Z mass into the propagator um, of the bosons, you can uh, neglect the mm, momentum with respect to the mass and you get the four fermion, fer, uh, four fermion interaction, where the uh, term coming from uh, G, okay, I cancel, and from uh, the W or Z mass is absorbed into the Fermi constant. And you, you will have two terms here, nu E bar, gamma mu, 1 minus gamma 5 E times E bar gamma mu 1 minus gamma 5 nu E. You see, this is the charged current term because you have neutrino going into an electron. Plus, then we have uh, nu e bar gamma mu 1 minus gamma 5 nu e e bar gamma mu g v l let's say e minus g a e times gamma 5 e, where g v e is minus 1 half plus 2 sine square theta Weinberg, and g a e is minus 1 half. So what is this? This term is for the charge current because when you take, for instance, nu bar E electron, this will, if you consider the expansion in Fourier modes of the fields, this contain annihilation or creation operators and these two fields here can destroy an electron or a neutrino in the uh, initial state and create an electron or neutrino in the final state. So if we consider, oops, let's make this here, the Feynman diagrams. Sorry? These two. G V E. Okay. This is just what comes from the Lagrangian hmm, at the first order. And uh, these coefficients come from the structure of the neutral current and depends this on the electron fields. And these are these two coefficients here. When you consider the other particles in the standard model, for instance, U, D, quarks, they, both have, they all have some uh, vector and ax axial coefficients that depends only on the Lagrangian of the standard model. If uh, uh, 
you, you look at the charge current, you see that here, this is one, and this is uh, also one. This, let's say, purely leptonic V minus A structure. From the Lagrangian, so from the covariant derivative in the Lagrangian, you can derive these coefficients for all the uh, particles in the standard model. You find tables when you have this for quarks, uh, for uh, leptons, okay? It's just something that is coming from the Lagrangian. I, don't, I didn't write all the uh, steps to get these coefficients, okay? There is no uh, mysterio mysterious origin of this. It's just what you get from the standard model Lagrangian. In the hypothesis of, uh, let's say, you go to the first order and you neglect the momentum in the propagator of the uh, boson, uh, the, the gauge boson uh, W and Z, so that you have a four fermion interaction instead of a Z or a W propagating in the vertex. Okay, now uh, the um, charge, we say, we, we want to see what is this, what are the contribution, contribution to this process. The first line corresponds to, for instance, a new E that goes into an uh, uh, electron, here there is a W, and uh, here an electron goes going into a neutrino, okay? While, this is for charged current, charged because at the vertex the, the charge changes by one unit, while you have another possibility with the Z, so you have neutral current contribution. Hmm? So this is possible for electron neutrinos, but also for muon or tau neutrinos. While this is possible only for the electron neutrinos. Okay, because you don't have flavor. So you cannot have a neutrino E going into a muon, okay? Because lepton number is a symmetry, an accidental symmetry of the standard model. So uh, also here we can have, we can consider the anti-neutrino cross-section. Now, when you consider the, these two facts, so the fact that for new E electron, you have the charge current contribution, and uh, while the neutral current contribution, contribution is possible for all flavors, neutrino flavors, also antineutrinos. Hmm? If you, do the calculations because what uh, we need it to, is to evaluate the modulus squared of this. So there is a, all a, a technique to do this calculation with all the traces of the gamma matrices, uh, etc. You find a kind of uh, a hierarchy between these cross sections. So you find that the integrated cross-section, so we are considering scattering of neutrinos on the electrons because matter contains electrons. With respect to the antineutrino cross-section, with respect to the new mu 
a new tau cross-section with respect to anti new mu and new tau cross-section is in this ratio, one to about 0 0.42, 0 0.16, 0.14. And so the fact that uh, the new E is larger than new mu and new tau cross section on electron target is due to this additional diagram that is not there for new mu and new tau electron scattering. While the fact that the new E cross section is larger than the anti new E, or new mu and new tau are larger, slightly larger than new anti new mu and new tau cross section, is due to this V minus A structure of the uh, weak interaction, okay? To understand exactly why we should go through all the calculation. On the notes, you can find some uh, uh, discussion, qualitative discussion about this uh, hierarchy. Now, just to ha have a, a flavor of about the order of magnitude of these cross-sections. Okay, imagine here we have 10 to the minus 43. And here, 10 to the minus 41. The integrated cross-section in centimeters squared, typically, This is the behavior. This is new E, E minus. So this is, let's say, zero, one. This is on logarithmic scale. No? Uh, this is uh, MeV, the energy of neutrinos. And uh, this is 10 MeV. And uh, uh, the three cross sections, the four cross sections actually, are like this. So the order of magnitude, you see, is very, very small. Mm? Uh, and uh, this process is typically important for neutrino energy of the order of MeV. Because when you consider higher energy, other cross-sections are much larger than this. Okay, so then we will make a rough estimate of what we can expect about the order of magnitude of the neutrino cross-sections. If you imagine, this is a very rough way to see things, no? but uh, um, if the target is larger, no? you go from, a new, from for an electron, from an electron to a nucleon, the cross section that you can expect is larger. Okay, just if you imagine that the cross section is the surface that a beam of particle will intercept. And also for a nucleus, the cross-section that you expect is larger if the neutrino see, sees all the nucleus. Because when uh, the energy of a neutrino increases, the neutrino will see the structure of the target. So when we co co consider nucleons, if the energy of the neutrino is high, the neutrino will see the quarks inside the nucleus. And if it is high, instead of seeing the nucleus as one thing, it will see nucleons inside the nucleus. Okay, this is for the 
um, neutrino electron scattering. Now, let's see what happens, but just uh, through a graph, a plot for neutrino nucle nucleons, nucleon scattering. So, imagine a neutrino. Uh, that to the charged current sees a nucleon and uh, uh, sorry this is uh, okay that's right a little bit smaller so in, in general, we can distinguish different contributions to the new neutrino nucleon scattering. Okay, and we call this uh, uh, quasi-elastic. The first, then resonant scattering or deep inelastic scattering. Quasi-elastic means that uh, it's not elastic, because elastic means you have a neutrino in the beginning, a neutrino in the end, uh, a nucleon, for instance, a, a neutron in the beginning, a neutron in the end. Quasi-elastic is because, because in, actually this is a charge current, so the neutron goes into a proton or proton into a neutron. Okay, let's make directly the plot. Now we have energy in GeV. And uh, we start from point 0.1 GeV to, let's say, 100 GeV. So uh, we have, this is 1, this is 10. Mm -hmm. And typically, the quasi-elastic contribution is important here. It's like something like this. This is the quasi-elastic contribution. And the order of mag here, we plot sigma divided by neutrino energy between 0 and 1. Okay, so when energy increases, the quasi-elastic contribution decreases because with higher energy, the neutrino will break the nucleon, okay? Instead of having uh, a quasi-elastic scattering, so a proton going to a neutron or vice versa, you will have many fragments from the scattering. Then there is a, okay, let's write smaller here, quasi-elastic. Then you have another contribution here, that is the resonant contribution. This means that uh, the neutrino scatters the nucleon and produces another um, baryon, for instance, the delta. And this delta then, so the resonant contribution is neutrino nucleons, for instance, delta, and this decay into uh, a nucleons and one or more pions. Hmm? This contribution can be dominating with respect to the quasi elastic scattering at a relatively high energy. But then, when the energy increases, goes to zero. Then you have deep elastic scattering. Deep means that the neutrino scatters the quarks inside the nucleons and produces a bunch of hadrons. Okay? And this 
starts lower, but then dominates. So you have these three regimes, quasi-elastic, resonant, and deep in elastic scattering. Obviously, you have to consider all three contributions when you uh, are interested in a cross-section. But at higher energy, you have deep in elastic scattering. So scattering on quarks. Intermedi intermediate energies, the resonant contribution, and in the lower part, the quasi-elastic contribution that dominates. Okay. Calculation are very complicated <laughs> in both cases. Here, you need the, the um, part on distribution functions and uh, it's very complicated. And here, uh, when you consider intermediate regions, how to treat problems is always not easy. Now, the last uh, uh, con cross sections that we want, I want to mention is when uh, a neutrino scatters on a nucleus and see all the nucleus as one entity. And this is called sevens and is coherent uh, elastic neutrino, obviously. Uh, nucleus, so this is the C, nucleus scattering. This is when you have a neutrino plus, let's say, nucleus going into neutrino plus nucleus. And you don't have an excited state of the nucleus in the final state, but just a small kick of the nucleus okay, that ha acquires some small kinetic energy. Now, the cross-section, integrated cross-section, is in the first approximation, okay, depends on the Fermi squared constant, 2 pi m, Q W squared over four. Now I will tell you what all these terms are. Q squared two minus M T E neutrino squared. Now M is the nucleus mass. T is its kinetic energy after the scattering. In U is the neutrino energy. Uh, this is a form factor that is one if uh, uh, there is full coherence. And, uh, okay, this is what we expect when we take the modulus squared of the matrix element. And uh, most important, or importantly, this Q squared is uh, so-called weak charge of the nucleus is n minus 1 minus 4 sine squared of the Weinberg angle times z. So since uh, this 1 minus 4 uh, is small, because of the value of sine squared of the theta Weinberg, point uh, 22, uh, I don't remember exactly the value. This dominates, so this is without a square. So Q squared is roughly the number of the uh, nucleons inside the nucleon. And this factor uh, makes this uh, cross-section large, if you can observe it, because the problem is that uh, the small kinetic energy acquired by the nucleus in the scattering 
is small <laughs> and so difficult to measure, but has been measured. So this is a, um, an object of intense study, this kind of cross-section, and uh, uh, relatively large because of the n squared uh, factor in front of it. So it can be, uh, let's say, one, two order of magnitude larger than the uh, neutrino nucleon cross section. Okay? But difficult to measure. And the range, the energy range uh, relevant, for, relevant for this uh, cross section is the neutrino energy is of the order of uh, tens of MeV. Okay? Uh, when the energy increases, uh, the neutrino does not see any more the nucleus as a whole. Okay, so this is about uh, uh, the three cross sections that uh, are important when you want to see what experiments do with neutrinos. Scattering on electrons, nucleons, and nuclei. Now, just uh, one last thing about uh, Elijo, how, ma how much time? Ah, okay. Okay, but 15 minutes, okay, thank you. Just uh, rough estimates of, maybe we could have done this at the beginning, but if we want to understand how large neutrino cross-section are, hmm, when you consider the matrix element to first order, they are proportional to the Fermi constant. So the cross-section depends on the phase uh, space factor, uh, but, and then on the matrix element squared, will contain GF squared. If you remember, GF is about 10 to the minus 5 GEV squared. Uh, sorry, GEV to the minus 2. Uh, now, must be proportional to uh, GEV to the minus 4, to get um, length squared, that is the dimension of the cross-section, you need here an energy squared near the Fermi constant. And the energy squared is called S, that is the center of mass energy squared of the scattering. One of the Mandelstam variable. When you have, uh, uh, for instance, two particles scattering into two particles, hmm, uh, all the uh, results about the matrix elements are typically expressed as a function of three variables. The first one is the, the P1 plus P2 squared. So if you consider the center of mass of the scattering, this is the energy in the center of mass squared because the vector part of this uh, two uh, four momenta will uh, give zero. And um, if you uh, put yourself in the center of mass, this is simply m squared plus 2me, because the target, uh, let's say, imagine the frame reference where the target is at rest. So it's for momentum, P1, let's say, is M0, and uh, the neutrino will have energy E, and uh, here uh, you have E times uh, a versa, if we neglect the neutrino masses. 
you take this squared, you get this. And if the energy is high enough, you can neglect the target mass with respect to Me. And so this is 2Me, about 2Me. So if you put the numbers into this rough estimates, you get exactly something that depends on the ma target mass and the neutrino energy in GV, and the order of magnitude is 10 to the minus 38. This is the, this estimation comes from the fact that in natural unit, you use this relation. This is equal to one, by the way. Hmm? So you get here something in GeV. If you want to go to centimeter squared, you use this. This is always what you need. We will use, for instance, when we discuss the oscillation probability. So try to do this. This is 10 to the minus five squared. Put GV and then change GV in uh, centimeters, okay, through this relation. And this is exactly what we get for energy around 1 GV and, uh, for instance, a nucleon of 1 GV, a proton or neutron. This is the order of magnitude of the quasi-elastic uh, resonant uh, cross-section that uh, was on the board. Uh, uh, okay, this one. Okay, In, this is one. If you put one here, this is the correct Okay, so the, the, uh, I put, the, there is a 10 to minus 38 <laughs> uh, centimeters squared in that plot. So this estimation is roughly the order of magnitude of neutrino cross section, very small, because they interact only weakly. Okay? Now, this was about cross section, and uh, uh, we can move, maybe. 10 minutes, just introduce. Next topic, very important one, because neutrino property can be investigated through neutrino oscillations. So um, we have seen that, oh sorry, neutrino uh, flavor against states uh, are related to neutrino mass eigenstates through the, so this is a three-dimensional nu e, nu mu, nu tau, and this is nu1, nu2, nu3, through this PMNS matrix. We forget about uh, the left uh, part uh, of the field to, to, because the notation uh, is too heavy, if not. Now, <clears throat> this is a unitary, unitary three by three matrix in the case of three generation of neutrinos. Three generation of neutrinos. Uh, in general, a uh, unitary matrix, dimension n, as n squared parameters. Uh, but, so this would have nine parameters, but some of these parameters can be absorbed into the um, phases of the fields. And it can be shown that this matrix actually depends on three angles that uh, uh, we call 
theta 1, 2, theta 1, 3, and uh, theta 2, 3, and on one uh, phase, delta. We will write the explicit uh, uh, form uh, for you. Um, so five out of nine of these parameters can be reabsorbed, reabsorbed into the relative phases between the neutrino and uh, antineutrino fields. If neutrinos are Majorana particles, there are two more additional phases that uh, typically are called phi 1 and phi 2. But, uh, so these are always there, and these only if neutrinos are Majorana particles. But uh, these phases never appear into the oscillation formulas. So, Oscillation experiments cannot give any information about the Majorana phases. Only we will see uh, neutrinoless double beta decay experiments, for instance, are sensitive to these phases. Uh, these phases here is uh, related to uh, processes that uh, uh, violate CP, uh, charge conjugation parity. And uh, um, the mixing angle can vary in 0 pi over 2 range, while, de while delta is typically 0 to pi, the range, or minus pi, pi, depends on. Okay, now, what is the explicit form of uh, U? Obviously, there are many possible uh, ways to parameterize the um, mixing matrix, but typically one uh, uh, chooses the uh, particle data group convention and uh, uh, let's write U is R23, theta23, R, uh, sorry, gamma uh, delta R13, theta13, uh, gamma delta dagger r 1 2 theta 1 2 the order is important because uh, three dimensional rotations do not commute so uh, we choose this order and uh, this implies a definition for the mixing corresponding definition for for, for the mixing angles if you uh, consider one of these three rotation matrices this for instance R23, okay, this uh, is a rotation, a 2, 3 rotation, so does not change the first axis, and it is uh, a rotation in the 2, 3 plane and so for the others, okay? While this gamma is a diagonal matrix with uh, one and E, remember, so for plus or minus, plus I delta. So there is a phase here and uh, typically one can absorb these this two uh, phases in R13, okay? And uh, uh, I will not write the complete expression of the U uh, matrix. Typically, instead of writing cosine, sine, one typically write C for cosine and S for sine and so on for all the mixing angles. So 
tomorrow we will discuss neutrino oscillation starting from here. But today we have learned that for three generation, generation of neutrinos, uh, the mixing matrix will depend on three mixing angles and one com complex phase, E to I delta, so one phase delta, plus two Majorana phases that for oscillations are not important. And so for the moment we neglect, okay? And uh, I think that uh, that's enough for today. Thank you.